Hello and welcome to the show. Today we have got our first Lamborghini taking on the Hot Wheels Showdown course. I've gone for the uh, Yalpa, uh, personally not driven this car on Horizon 3. I think I won it in a one of the level up wheel spins at some point quite a long time ago and I haven't particularly touched it. So this is the car that's going to have a go around this course again much like the super went out last time this in the so far relatively golden era of cars uh, supposedly for taking on the hot wheels course 1988 car this one uh, starts off as a low b class vehicle so should be plenty of room for upgrades we're going to start of course with the tires the hot wheels race compound we'll put it up to a mid a class of course uh, where we have some decent size tires 255 at the front not too bad not too bad but okay 285s at the rear again as far as overall tyre sizes go, it's not terrible. I'd like bigger tyres, but that's not too bad to work with. Uh, I'm just going to have a curious look at engines. Okay. 6.2 V8 or 5.2 litre V10. Now, I don't know what the standard engine in this car is like in terms of uh, kind of maximum power obtainable from it. We'll have a look, though, of course, to our customary uh, downforce parts. We need them. We need grip. We need a lot of grip, really, in this uh, in this car, or any car, quite frankly. Uh, we've proved time and time again the importance of grip. Uh, of course, race suspension. Hopefully less bouncing going on in uh, this vehicle. It would be nice after two big wheelie cars uh, to have something with uh, some composure. We will then chuck on the weight reduction down to £2,800. Similar sort of weight to the Supra. Uh, we're going to want a gearbox just to make sure that we have got some adjustability built into the car. Uh, ooh, we're going to want diff as well while I am here. Right, engine time. Uh, ooh, no, continue working. We, if this round engine is going to work, we're going to need a couple of turbos, I would think, quite probably. It uh, looks like turbo is going to get us more power overall than supercharger. We're probably going to need all of it if it is to even remotely work with this standard engine. Now, we're not expecting perhaps to get crazy, crazy levels of power out of this car. I would expect to see maybe the six, 700 horsepower mark be around where we get it if we can do it with a standard engine, which I'm not really, I'm not really thinking we can here. It's not the worst standard engine I've ever worked with in a car, but that's not going to get the power required to, uh, to do it. So, to the engine swaps, we have got the V8 or V10 as an option. Now, the, v, the V10 has more power, but less torque, and is fractionally heavier than the V8. Now, I have used the 6.2 in a lot of cars, so I think we're going to go play around with the 5.2 litre V10, having never used it in, in this series, as far as I'm aware. I might be wrong, I apologise if I am. Bloody hell, 800 horsepower is looking possible out of this car. That's a little bit more power than I was expecting from it, but it's, uh, it's kind of a good sign in some ways. It's a good sign if we can get that much power out of the vehicle. I think I'll go for naturally aspirated over going for turbos in this. If we can, can we get it naturally aspirated to... Uh, if we can get it to the 700 horsepower mark naturally aspirated and then figure around with other bits and pieces uh, to get the PI. Yeah, 733 horsepower is not bad going. It's not bad going at all in this car, and then we'll make up the rest of the PI, I'm hoping, elsewhere. Uh, I say elsewhere, with things like clutch and maybe a gearbox and drive shaft, maybe a next stage of gearbox. Ooh, not quite the next stage of gearbox. Uh, can we do it with drive shaft? Will that do us? No. Okay, maybe we'll take out that grader clutch, and then we'll go gearbox. Uh, oh, it's what it's what to be playing awkward buggers, doesn't it? Um... You know, I think we're actually better off doing that. We'll ignore the PI slightly. We'll do that. We'll do that. We will get... Ooh, uh, just having a think. No, I've changed my mind again. Uh, <laughs> reason being is I suspect that this car is a five-speed car to begin with. Maybe that is why the gearbox is making such a difference in terms of PI. Now, five-speeds have actually tended to go relatively well here. I'll bugger it. Um... This is going to be an adjustable gearbox, so speed is irrelevant because I can just tune the gear ratios. Fine, you want to be an awkward bugger, then we're going to ignore gearbox. It was worth a try to see if I could fit it in, but I'm not going to sacrifice any of the other parts for it. And we have, just checking, we have got all of these. Yeah, I did put all of those on. Well, our car 
is ready to go. 733 horsepower, a lot of power in this one. 502 torque, a little bit down on torque, 2,700 pounds though. Decent power to weight ratio. If decent tyres could be bigger, but then we think of our leader was only on two four fives with a similar level of power. It's uh, not bad, not bad going. Again, statistic-wise, this Yalpa is right in around the area of, well, the cars that have gone very fast indeed. So we are back to the skyscraper takeoff circuit with our Yalpa. I'm going to have five laps to try and beat the Ford Sierra Cosworth. A 133.6 still remains our fastest time. I do expect, kind of expect slash hope the Yalpa to be competing up and around that area, much like we saw from the Supra. The Supra couldn't quite do it last time out. Maybe the uh, Lamborghini can. Certainly if it's not quite uh, in the uh, mid-33s, we may well still see this as a... Uh, a top 10 car, quite oversteery, quite oversteery through turn three there. Again, we have got smaller tyres at the back of the car and it is on cold tyres having just set off. Hopefully, once they've warmed up, which they probably will in a lap or so or in a couple of quarters, or we're going to bounce off some walls, that's unfortunate. Um, yeah, then, uh, then we shouldn't be quite so bad. We can maintain a little bit more quarter speed. Just how much quarter speed can we take? with the Lamborghini. It's pretty good. Pretty good through the turns. Looks like it's going to be an oversteery rather than understeery car. Acceleration not quite as good as the Supra down there. We're only 160. Right, one of the slower cars we've had in terms of acceleration. Admittedly, you know, it might just be a bit of a poor run as well. So we'll reserve judgment uh, for just now. We do get a bit of a slide coming towards that section as well, which might help matters. Yeah, the Alpha turned in. And now comes the big test. Having had two cars with some terrible bouncing going on, uh, will we have a uh, Lamborghini that is well behaved or will we have a... Oh, no, well behaved Lamborghini. That's lovely. 209 miles an hour. It's been a while since we've seen as good a run off of a uh, boost pad as that one. Dive down to the inside. Try and make up as much speed as we can. 220, though, it is at the bottom of the course. Slither our way out of the final turn. 36-6 from an opening lap. Pretty good going. Pretty good going. Opening up. Considering there's a little bit of a uh, ping pong through our split section. That's not too not too shabby at all. Although of course helped by the mega run across the uh, boost pads. Are we going to break sideways through turn three? Yes. We can't get on the power as soon as I would uh, ideally like there. But I'm hoping we can make up time elsewhere around the lap. Just about got it under control through that next corner. Oh, we're going to break sideways there. Again, we can recover it. We can keep it under control. I fear we might be seeing a very, very similar story to that Supra. The way that this is driving so far... Uh, 165 is better down there. Again, very, very similar speed to the, uh, to the Supra. As I said, very similar statistics to that Toyota. I wonder if it's going to be a little bit of a, a good car overall, but not able to excel well enough in any one part of the of the lap. We've certainly not got ludicrous top speed. It does seem to struggle a little bit with maintaining its speed up around the loop, which is uh, not unheard of. Certainly, it does like that was that was in the air and it got a mega run off of the boost pad. That's weird. <laughs> Yeah, it's just not holding its speed around the top. We get a good run, a good run off the boost pads, and it's holding its speed at about a similar level to the Supra, getting a bad run off of there. Oh, we're going to slither our way out of the final corner. Yes, it is a 34-2, though, from the Yalpa. So it is right, it's right there. It's right in and amongst that section. Oh, don't get the power down too soon. Don't be a moron, because you will just oversteer your way through these quarters. Patience, 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 patience. A little bit of patience from me. Still wanting, the back end still wanting to uh, slide out around there. Oh, I chucked it in a smidge too soon. That's the... Uh, <laughs> just about got away with all of that. A little bit uh, nerve-wracking. It's like a brush of the wall. How fast? Oh, that's a good... It's a good run. I can get the turn in at 140, but it's not got the grip to get away with that one. It's not got the grip like the Mercedes 190E or the Ferrari Testarossa for that matter. I fear it might not have the acceleration of the uh, Sierra and so on. Although if it can repeatedly get good runs off of the boost pads, that will help it out. 
whatever peculiar characteristic it is on these cars that, uh, <laughs> that determine how much speed they get off the secondary pad, uh, it would be helpful indeed. I've long thought it's to do with the way the cars are bouncing around, but this one here was bouncing as it hit that pad and got a 208 mile an hour launch, which is very, very unusual. And again, we get a 210 mile an hour launch. It's brilliant for the Yalpa. I ran a little bit too far on the inside on the way up. We will keep hugging the inside on the way down, trying to make the most of the steeper part of the course ever so fractionally locked by the front wheels. Coming into there, it's going to put us a little bit wide on the exit, try and get on the power. Wasn't a better lap that time around. Okay, two more laps. We've kind of done our learning, as I say that. We've done our learning. What we have learned is oversteery bugger time. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it is one of the one of it's one of the more oversteery cars. It's certainly going to be oversteering more than understeering. Is uh, is this car personally not the way? Oh, not the way I like my cars to drive. And I think it's another one that I'm going to be saying exactly the same thing about. There is just not enough overall grip. Uh, but that was an absolutely mega run through there in the back end, wanting to let go at the critical moment. Despite the, uh, yeah, the Sierra on relatively tiny tyres, the Sierra's chassis was obviously good enough that uh, that could carry the corner speed in ways that some of these other cars just aren't. And the Sierra was also, I think, a little bit quicker accelerating than this uh, than this Yalpa. Similar power levels in a lighter car will uh, certainly be helping with uh, with that one. It's this build series actually been really interesting, seeing the ways different cars have uh, have played out and try to find that balance between. You need a lot of grip around this circuit. We've seen it time and time again. You really do. Oh, that's the first time we've got a poor run. You might be about to lose. Oh, God damn, that is uh, that was about a, a millisecond or two away from complete and utter disaster. All right there, started sliding on its way up the hill. That is never what you want. Okay, so this lap time here is basically gone. Uh, 37 something is uh, yeah kind of uh, kind of useless. Right, what can we do? Oh, back end once more, wanting to step out on us. I kind of got away with that to an extent. Will it cost us a little bit of time, but not not as bad as it could have been. It wasn't a tremendous slide across the road. Uh, and as we come up through at turn four, don't excite the rear of the car. Very easy to run into the wall on the outside there, the way that the uh, course curves around. We don't spin the wheels up through there, which is nice to see. Can actually, this is one of the nicest cars I think I've had for positioning it on the exit of the uh, split section there. Peculiar, because it's certainly not the grippiest car I've had, just the way that it's handling is working for me at uh, that section. Big stop into the uh, crossover point uh, go little bit of wheel spin little bit of sliding on the way out again you are probably lost a tiny fraction of a uh, second there it's slightly less than ideal but is likely to be happening with this uh, with this car just the, the natural oversteeriness of the vehicle is uh, something you've got to be mindful of and uh, easy to easy to excite the Alpha. oh bugger bugger get down ah we twisted we twisted on the uh, way uh, way off the ramp, but I, I don't know what causing that that twisting from the car. Typical on our uh, two final laps, we couldn't get a uh, mega. I actually, still got good straight line speed by the end of it, and I threw it all away, carrying too much speed on the way in. And that lap time was gone. A couple of oversteery moments certainly didn't help. We had a couple of issues as well with the uh, with the boost pad. Still, actually, did get some decent top end speed there down towards the bottom of the course. Uh, I'm going to be saying exactly the same thing pretty much that I said with the Supra. It's a good car to drive. It is a good car around this circuit. A 34.2 is a, you know, a, a very decent lap time. It's a top 10 lap time. But we lack the overall grip. We certainly lack the grip to compete with the Testarossa. We lack the, the uh, straight line speed acceleration to compete with the Sierra. Once more, it's a car that is good in, in different areas. It's certainly not slow accelerating and certainly not slow through the corners, but it doesn't excel in either. And as far as kind of combination goes, can't beat that Ferrari, can't beat the, uh, the Ford or the likes of the M3 for that matter. The 34.2 will put our Lamborghini into a 8th place. 
it will go just a couple of tenths of a second down on the Supra. Very, very similar lap times. Very similar car in many ways to the uh, to the Supra there. It beats just the Renault 5 Turbo, the Charger Daytona, CTSV Eclipse, and so on. But yeah, loses out to the Pursuit Ute, Mercedes 190E, uh, MX-5, and M3, and so on. Remar remarkably similar car in many ways to the uh, to the Supra. Certainly an interesting one to drive. Not a not a car that I disliked around here, but uh, just not uh, not good enough through through the corners. A little bit too a little bit too oversteery for my uh, for my personal liking. But uh, there we go. That is going to be it for this uh, video. Thank you very much for watching, and until next time, uh, goodbye.